All right. Well, um, all right, we can go ahead and start. So yeah, thanks for joining us today. We're just going to take a tour through some of the um, new updates to the Arctos user interface and um, probably probably noticed some of these changes rolled out in the, the last couple of weeks. So hopefully you've kind of had some time to explore, but um, ultimately they were you know implemented to improve site functionality and stability, but also just to make Arctos more uh, mobile responsive for phones and other mobile devices. Um, so, and in the process, basically Arctos has a, a new look, which you've probably noticed and, and played with. So we'll, we'll look uh, at all the forms that have, have had the most changes um, and I'll be demonstrating them, but I don't think I'll take up the whole hour. So feel free to just interrupt with questions or um, you can either put them in the chat or just uh, unmute. Um, and then we'll have time at the end as well, but, but we can just ask as we go. Um, and we are, you know, asking for people's questions or feedback. So what you like or what you still need. So definitely feel free to add that and kind of soliciting that before we, we share this with the broader community. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Right. Can everyone see that? All right. Let me just move things around momentarily. Okay. So um, yeah, first things first, <laughs> this is new, the welcome page. So um, this is has kind of our new terms of use agreement. So you'll see that there's an Arctos community data policy. So that link is going to take you to um, just our policy on data use and citation and data publication and licensing. We also have a new acknowledgement of harmful content. So hopefully you've checked this out, but this was put together by our DEI committee and approved by the Arctos Working Group. But essentially it, um, it discusses the possibility of encountering offensive or derogatory language in Arctos data. Um, and also that individual collections are responsible for how their data are presented. And that sometimes, uh, you know, data, the historic data needs to be preserved for the historic record. Um, and so that's why you might encounter um, sort of that, that sort of language, especially for place names and such. So anyway, it does provide a mechanism for people to either contact the DEI group or to just use the report um, comment or report bad data. So that's our annotation button. So people can actually just find records that might be contain problematic language and notify the, the relevant collections so that perhaps that data could be um, redacted or, or dealt with. Um, there's also a link to our Arctos API policy. And so this is just if uh, if folks want API write or read only um, API access, they must basically submit a, a brief justification uh, for approval with the following information. Um, and and essentially this will um, this is kind of going to reduce sort of the the traffic, which is um, is why we have this whole welcome page. So essentially, you know, over time we've had more bots and more traffic and sometimes it's malicious, sometimes it's legitimate, but basically it interferes with site stability and can cause Arctos to crash. So this is sort of an example of a, a legitimate use or there we go, a legitimate use of, of the traffic. But um, this justification is just helpful for us too to just survey folks and know um, the different applications people are using if they are using sort of API or web service to access Arctos. So um, Basically, if you are not logged in, you'll need to agree to continue to access Arctos. And it'll bring you to the search page. And so first I'll just go through this header <clears throat> and then we'll go through the new search functionality and then we'll go through results, <clears throat> excuse me. So the search menu is going to look pretty similar to our old options. There's just a few changes. So this browse collections is just our portal page, so it's just been renamed. So that'll take us to the portal page. Um, we've got that API link. Everything else is going to be similar. There is a randomizer, which replaces that try something random little bar that used to be on our old search page. And right now it looks a little funky. So there is a there is a GitHub issue for making this more grid-like. 
Um, next is going to be manage. So this is going to be a big change from our old sort of cascading mega menus. Um, so those used to be kind of difficult to navigate and hover over. Um, so this is more of a directory page and it's organized by category. And this is going to be customized to your permissions. So right now I'm not logged in. So there's going to be a, a limited amount of tools that I can access. But if I log in, you'll see I have more tools available. So now I've logged in and you can see <clears throat> within each category, there are quite a bit more options. So hopefully this makes finding uh, a bit more intuitive and, and easy. And, and you can always you know, control F if you're looking for something specific. There's also a table view. So if you switch to table view, um, you'll be able to see the forms here. And this is nice because right now it's up to see only the forms I can access but you can actually set it to, to explore sort of all the forms available. And this is nice because it is a sortable table. So you can you know, sort by form or category, find a brief description of each, and then also what, um, what privilege permissions are needed to access that form. So that can be helpful if you don't yet have access to something and, and wanna know how to um, either request that access or grant it yourself and through the manage collection menu. Um, go back to the default view. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, the word transactions is has kind of been broken up into its constituent parts. So we've got accessions, loans, and permits rather than a transactions box on this directory. Um, so hopefully you find this a bit more easier to navigate than the old tools up, up top. Uh, moving on to the next menu item, join. That's going to be all the same options as our previous layout. Help is going to have all of our old options with that acknowledgement of harmful content, which by the way is down at the bottom here at the footer. So we've tried to make that pretty high visibility. And then um, this, my login name is, now replaces what used to be my stuff. So it's going to have, um, uh, I'll just say this number here is the minutes until you are logged out. So that's kind of nice to be able to see. Um, notifications is going to take you to kind of your loan reminders or pending data, agents marked for merge. I don't want to show you the gory details of mine because I think you all saw I had over almost 500 unread notifications. Um, I'll also point out on the profile page, um, something that's new. So um, uh, this is going to be coming to be relevant later, but right now there's this option that says ask for file name. And usually this is defaulted to no, um, but I've changed it to yes here for, so I can show you when I try to download a file, but essentially that's going to um, prompt prompt me to enter my, my purpose for download. So whether it's research, educational, and so I'll show you that when I download a data set. All right, so, um, let me log out. So I want to show you kind of what it looks like to search for someone who's just a public user who's not logged in. So find catalog records. So this is basically the, the equivalent of a basic search. So this query block has sort of um, limited options visible. And we thought that this would be sort of a more welcoming way for new users to query Arctos <clears throat> with some of those options hidden so that it wasn't quite so overwhelming with a lot of different field choices. So essentially all of, all of the most um, common fields that people use are, are visible, but there are a lot more options um, that you can show. But just to kind of sort of uh, give a, a tour of this. So uh, a lot of these, different bands have uh, have changed. So um, this category identifiers is essentially the same. Identifications used to be called identifications and taxonomy, but it's essentially the same. And catalog record has become a much larger category. So this used to just contain parts and attributes, but now it's absorbed a lot more options. So if I actually show all these options, um, it now contains a lot of different fields relating to media, relating to citations and projects, uh, 
to transactions. And all those options used to be kind of in different categories. So kind of put them all in catalog record. Um, parts has been broken out separately. It used to be uh, within catalog record and also within the curatorial category. And then um, we used to have a locality category and now it's been broken out into event, place, and map. And we also used to have a date and collector category and agent has been absorbed into catalog record and date is now an event. So a little bit differently, um, but hopefully most of that is intuitive. Um, and like the old form, you know, each field has uh, a dynamic field title. So if you click on that, it's gonna give you a brief definition and most likely a link to more documentation. Whereas these little define hyperlinks are gonna take you directly to the code table definitions. So that sort of behavior is still the same. Um, and so you can, this is the basic search, but you can experiment with advanced searching by just saying show all options and just setting all these blocks to um, show all options, which is the same as um, show more options in the old form. And then there is a customize option um, and that's going to isolate certain fields. So say you don't wanna turn on every single, every single field in catalog record, you can customize. And this is gonna create, give you this large pop-up, um, which is a little bit, um, Kind of overwhelming, but it does actually scroll to the category I've selected. So all this blue highlight means I'm in the catalog record. And now I can just toggle on whatever fields I want to see, um, or I can say none, or I can reset and I want to see all, and then save. So let me go to none and then just toggle on a few. And you'll see that those will become available in the display. Um, I do recommend, so I'll show you this a bit more when I log in. Um, right now, if you're a public user, it's not going to save these customizations, but when you are logged in, it'll save exactly what layout you prefer, and it will remember that each time you log in. So it's kind of an exercise. Hopefully, you only have to do once or a couple times. Um, and then just to show you kind of a basic uh, search results when you're not logged in. So um, Results are now going to be displayed at the bottom of the screen here rather than popping up on a second page. So if we go to this toolbar, you'll see it's pretty limited for someone who's not logged in. So you'll be able to review um, results in this table and also in Berkeley Mapper, but you're prompted to log in to, to have more tools available to you. So if I want to um, just do a search, let's see. Um, Oh, I have everything on. So let's do a search for salamanders. Okay, so you'll see I've got some results here. And what I want to point out is that you can customize this. So, so these are the default fields. And so maybe you don't really want to know too much about coordinate data right now. And so you can customize what fields you're seeing. And so you can see the current fields are toggled, but I can actually add what I what I want. So um, maybe I want media, maybe I want to add class. Um, and you can essentially drag these in the order that you want visible. So maybe if class is sort of my primary um, filter other than quid, I can check all, uh, or oh gosh, <laughs> I just, sorry. Uh, let me recheck those. I can save that. Let me just do that again. Um, well, now I've lost it. Let me see class. It's still up. Oh, it's top. still up there. Oh, I dragged it. Okay, there we go. Let me just click a few of these and there. So now you can see it's in the it's present in the table, and so um, that's a nice feature to customize. One thing to note about this is so you'll see there's 43 entries, and my record limit is um, 250,000. But the, and you'll see this note, the cost of columns determines how many result queries may return. So I can basically start to toggle, I'm not going to check all of them, but if I start doing a big groups of fields, um, you'll notice that the record limit cap is going to change. So if I save this 
and it's only 43 records, so maybe it won't, but, but yeah, so record limit 250. So essentially it's just creates more, it's more computing power. So that limit's going to dynamically change in response to that. All right, so now I'm gonna log in just to show you what this looks like logged in. And so now you notice that my query block is actually customized to my preferences and what I typically tend to search. And you'll notice my tools, I have a lot more now. Um, so if I do a search, let's see, um, I'm gonna do a search for this NSF grant that we currently have. And I was going to show you media so you can see some nice images and submit this query. Okay. So now you can see, and one nice feature is it does uh, jump down to the results there. Um, so now you can see my results um, tailored to my parameters. And um, I wanna just kind of go through this menu here. So now in the tools, we see uh, there's a download option. So this is what I was talking about with that, um, that file option in my profile. So I toggled it to yes, and so now, Basically, before I can download, I, I need to enter whether my purpose is research, personal, or education. I can even rename that and, and click. And this is really nice because as users uh, enter these, these remarks, you'll be able to see them in, this, in the statistics. Um, and that's an option under manage. And so it'll, it'll be really nice because it will it'll be a way for you to sort of um, get a sense of who's using your collection and for what. All right, um, another option here is reload with shareable URL, which I believe is a new option. But so if you look, um, if you look at my, well, if you look at this <laughs> search, usually it ends, I'm not sure why it's doing that now, but usually it kind of is generic like this. And so if I actually click reload with shareable URL, it's going to be a specific search so I can share that with a researcher and they can get the same results with having, without having to query specific parameters. Um, another tool is summarize and this replaces the see results as function that used to be in the old form. So if I summarize these results, you'll see um, I can basically control um, what variable, <clears throat> what variables I want to see and get a sense of, well, let's see, I don't want media here. We'll do, I want to see collectors identified as state and year. Um, and if I summarize these, it's really nice because you can just sort, you know, how many things you have from where. And <clears throat> one thing to note about this is that you need to, um, if you want more variables, they need to be present in your search results. So if I wanted to have um, class in there or other fields um, represented, I would actually need to go and add those to this customize table and then redo the, the summarize ac action. Um, comment or report bad data is just a quick link to making a, an annotation for whatever records you've pulled up. And let's see, save search. So a lot of these are, are things we've already had available. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is uh, right now, if you wanted to remove records from this data set, um, you don't see that old remove checked rows. So that is in the customize menu. So if you go down a little bit, remove row. And so um, this is something that you can drag to the top and include. And once you toggle it and save, it's now going to be available to um, remove selected rows. So um, I can click on things and remove them from my query. And this will save. So now that I've toggled that remove button, it'll stay in my search results when I log in. So I don't have to keep resetting that. Um, so now if we, any questions on the searcher results? 
Hey, Emily, this is yes. Carla. Um, yes. Just one co quick comment on the summarize because it took me a while to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Like if you go back to your summarize, if you actually want to see the records, like have a link to the records, you have mm -hmm. to click link to records plus whatever it is that you want to summarize by. See, so right now you don't see any, you can't actually access those records. So if you okay. click, also click link to records. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then do it, then you'll get the link. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Which Dusty had explained to me. So gotcha. That makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And right now my, this data set is, is sort of atypical because I only have one record <laughs> per, per count, but you know, when you're grouping um, right. things, yeah. it's really nice because it'll pull up, you know, everything in a family from Guatemala or whatever you've created. Yeah. If you're doing like, we use that a lot for doing taxonomic changes, updates. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Emily, this is Tom. Sorry to be late on this, but uh, maybe you covered this already, but in the results, uh, is there a way to, to see the collector number or um other than like having all the other collect catalog numbers or how does that like having a field number or collector number specifically is that possible or not to my knowledge and i don't know if that was that i don't believe that was an option previously um let's see yeah i think those all just kind of get concatenated all the other ids um most of anyone else knows that, but one way to do it is to, um, in your profile, whatever you yeah. have is your selected ID. Um, you can, I, I think you can add that as a column. Um, oh, yeah. as your custom, like yeah. the profile thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it was before. Okay. But yeah. I, yeah, cool. I believe you can only add cool. one. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's yours, right. Um, yeah, you can indicate that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Maybe not. Thanks. Oh, yeah. yeah, and if you go, you know, if it's a different number that you're interested in, you can just come here and change it to that number and then get what you want. Yeah, so, um, yeah, NK, I know, would be relevant. Right. For yeah, yeah, that's what I was, uh, I was trying if to you'll scroll with. some more and customize results, there are some other options down there. Oh, cool. Thanks, Dusty. Cool, thanks. Oh, and... uh one other quick question while, oh, while yeah. I have my microphone set up. Um, maybe I should turn the camera on to actually see my grizzled face here. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the, uh, the, the way it shows up in both of my browsers, like when I go to manage these, uh, all these options for, you know, agents, data entry, all these tiles, um, the text is pretty close to each other. So, um and but there isn't there it's just really more of like a browser slash how you have it zoomed in right so, so you're saying you'd like a little bit more line separation between those links tom yeah and i'm i mean i just you know it's i guess it's it's more of like a ask question but i know like with uh myself and the students who are working you know they're like oh clicked on the wrong thing, clicked on the wrong thing, you know, like, so maybe Got this, because, you know, people are, I, are I, cramming I mean, a lot of things on a, on a screen, but, mm -hmm. uh, but even on my like 30, whatever this is, 32 inch monitor, stuff is still pretty close to each other. So, and, you know, not a big deal, but like, if you're, if you're trying to, you know, uh, find container versus bulk load container, that's two different things, right? Gotcha. So yeah, uh, I'll, um, screen here. Let me, let me file an issue. I'll do it right now. A little more kerning. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's a lot better than, you know, well, it's not those kerning, of you that... it's line, line issues. Okay. So, yeah, got it. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thank you for doing all the hard work. It's dusty. We're just making dusty. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just job security, right? Dusty? That's exactly. That's what <laughs> that's what we're really concerned about. <laughs> um, we actually have a uh, regular meeting time for UI issues. So uh, please, if there's feedback or things that you'd like to bring up um, like this, um, 
uh, please do so because we're actively discussing it and tweaking things. Oh, thanks. Cool. All right, so I was going to show um, a catalog record since this page has changed as well. Um, so, you know, just like before, you've got um, a way to easily navigate to any of the tables by clicking these um, these buttons up top. And then, of course, you can get to them by clicking the edit buttons in any of the respective boxes. Um, and this page, uh, one of the biggest changes is really that the, the ordering of information has changed slightly. So this order was kind of um, agreed upon across several collections. It's just sort of a, a compromise for, for what people needed to see. Uh, we eventually see a day where potentially people can, can uh, have a preferred order for their collection. But for right now, this is how it is. Um, and this page is dynamic. So basically, um, you know, if, if you do, if you don't have data for something, it's not going to appear. So for instance, like if I have more identifications, those are just going to be new tiles that, you know, sit in this row or even below it, if I have a lot of extra um, determinations. And then, you know, citations are, are going to be visible if you have them and not if you don't. Um, and let's see. Um, the one thing to note is that the links to um, GBIF, IDIG Bio, Globi, sort of those external links have moved to the bottom, which was a big change. We kind of de-emphasized those over pulling up some of our um, provided data. But let's see, I'm not going to say much more about that. Um, oh, one thing that is I wanted to point out is that there's a new record identifier here, which is, of course, is the same as the GLID up top, but it it's just makes that more explicit for outside users to copy and, and include in their um, in their data sets. And then um, one thing that we we wanted everyone to think about is the the new collection header. So this is kind of a good time to check your own collection headers and update them. So there are a lot of tools to kind of manage the look of these. Now let me grab um, have a link to the the handbook here that Teresa put together. Um, so this right here, okay. This is nice documentation on basically how to update your collector, collection header. So you can uh, customize the color, you can put your own logo in there and you can include um, text about the collection and the institution and you can change the color of the hyperlinks. So just for instance, um, I've updated mine to match the CU gold. And then this is um, our herb collection. I haven't added sort of collection text, but if I go to um, one of our bird records, I'm pretty sure I this pull up a bird record. Um, you can see I've actually added this, this text here. And so this is gonna link out to our, our museum's page than our specific vertebrate zoology page at CU. And so, um, yeah, good time to kind of update that. We're here to help you if you need help and you'll do this all through Manage Collection, um, but you can you know, choose your own colors and good time to just kind of check and make sure all these links still work and, and things like that. But yeah, that, I, yeah. Oops, sorry. I was just gonna say this document is really nice because it um, tells you, you know, the the pixel height and everything that is going to make your um, logo display nicely. But yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I just wanted to um, emphasize that now is the time to do this because right now uh, we, we since with the big interface change, uh, we're also realizing that a lot of sometimes the older logos uh, are are uh, haven't been swapped out for a really long time and they've been in um, in JPEG format, which actually loses resolution over time. So uh, now's a good time to refresh that. Uh, people at, at, were available to help, like uh, Emily said, so, uh, and that includes like Photoshop work. Um, also, I would highly encourage people to um, specify specific uh, text colors. So even if you just want the default color of black, um, specifying that will override the default CSS and um, that will ensure that the text 
won't change color if it's been clicked um, because the default mode is, you know, it, it, the link actually has a different color if you've clicked on that link before. And you typically don't necessarily want that in your um, collection header. It's nice when it's like nice and stable and static. So, um, so even if it, the, the color that you want is black or white, you know, uh, it, it's useful. I've been encouraging people just to go into manage collections, review all the parameters in there, and at least um, uh, add in a text color and since those are like stable colors uh, uh, and the web uh, you, the CSS can interpret these colors you can just actually add in black or white you don't need like a special hex code or anything so uh, for instance in that second box header link color um, now that's a particular hex code. You can see it's pound and a bunch of numbers and letters. But instead, if you just wanted it plain black or plain white, you can just use, you know, the text this, black or white. This and is then, the hex code for black, but yes, I could have just typed in black. Yeah, right, exactly. <clears throat> um, so anyways, it's pretty simple um, addition. The other thing I, I will just point out uh, for people who have, um, who manage collections, right now um, we've been, allowing any header image to show up. Um, and eventually what we're going to do is probably port those all over to the Arctis code base um, proper. And um, in the future, those will have to be added to the code in order for it to uh, appear. So this is this time period um, while we're in the middle of, you know, our savvy grant is uh, the time to, if you wanted to try out new um, JPEGs and, and image logos easily, uh, you can just add in the URL, but that's not going to be allowed um, forever and forever. So um, I'm just encouraging people to take advantage of this window um, for trying things out. And if you really want to try out some crazy combinations that you do not want to see on your production server, uh, then uh, sign up on the test instance. Um, um, you can send Dusty an email, I guess. I don't know, T Dusty or Teresa, and they can probably set you up with your collection permissions um, that match what you have in production. And then you can try out different color combinations there. Yeah, and so just um, Michelle updated the, the MVZ header recently. I think there's another nice one from UAM, um, Angie to the ethnology. Yeah, so all sorts of um, fun combinations you can do to sort of give your collection a look. The default's just going to be a white background, so jazz it up. <laughs> all right, um, so the another thing I was gonna show was um, loans. And so, um, let's see, you go to a loan. This form has changed, so, um, you go there. So adding items to a loan uh, right now. Um, oh, see the button has gone away. You used to be able to use the old form, but now we are on to the new form. So um, if I want to add items to this loan, it'll take me to my query page. Then I'm going to grab um, some catalog numbers that I'd like to include. Let's say I want to add these three records. And so um, the way to add those to a loan is you'll use the tool menu and um, you know make sure you, in this case, you do need to query for exactly what you want before. Um, I could have probably gotten away with not including a collection code and just putting the catalog numbers and then checking what I wanted. Um, now you're just you know filtering for the, the records that you want. Um, you'll add those items to the transaction. I guess you could still get away with it, but it's easier to filter for what you need. Um, and so the first thing to know, let me make this a little bit smaller. Is that, I'm not gonna do too much here, but I think now you can see a little bit better. Um, so the first thing to note is that you can filter this view. So let's say, you know, I only wanna loan things that are in collection. I don't wanna loan things that are on loan currently. So I can apply a filter and that's gonna leave me with the one thing that I actually still have in the collection. Um, but in this case, I might be wanting, I might wanna actually do a media loan. So I might wanna be able to see everything even if it is technically on loan. Um, 
And so you'll see this layout and just sort of some wayfinding. These red boxes indicate that this item currently has a status of on loan. So it's just sort of a flag, like, do you really want to double loan an item? Um, and in this case, it's media, so it can be simultaneously loaned, so it's not too concerning. Um, one thing to note here is that it says the item disposition is on loan. This is just the item disposition is essentially what it will, um, the disposition will be once I check this box. So it's defaulted to on loan, but you can actually update this. So if I'm actually making an exhibit loan or, or changing the disposition to something different, I can make that update. And um, this div so this default view has a lot of columns. Some of them are not always gonna be relevant for your purposes. So if I actually um, click none and save, this is the default view is gonna have kind of more limited information. Um, but for me, I need to see certain pieces of information before I can make a decision. So I wanna see the, the actual disposition of the object. I might wanna know the condition I might want to see the part ID and the barcode, um, any remarks, and then save. And so um, this is just helpful for whatever sort of um, whatever sort of customizations you need. So now I can actually see, oh yeah, these media are on loan. This organism is in collection. And um, in this case, you know, I have two parts that are the same thing. So I basically need to see, you know, which one is which. Um, in these condition or part remarks where I've stored that. So in order to put things on loan, you'll just check whatever it is and then add those checked parts to the transaction. And um, I think that's pretty much all. Um, I, can anybody think of any other sort of new forms? I think these are the major ones, which is you know the, the header, the search, the results, and the loans. Um, one other thing that has has updated is the banner. So we used to have announcements that kind of was in this banner up top um, and you would hover over and then you could read it. Now we're gonna have sort of a, a pop-up that you can click um, and hide once you've read the message. So that's a new change. Um, but I think that's kind of hits the highlight. So I just wanted to kind of cruise through those to give us time to ask questions and discuss, so. I think that's all that I was planning on going over. Yeah, I have a question about the dispositions because I got very confused when I first did this because, yeah. it, you know, pre-populates and they both say disposition in the column header. Is there, can we clear, like, distinguish those a little bit better? Like one's the current disposition, one's the yeah. selected disposition or something because it, it is confusing. Yeah, there is an issue. I think we'll probably talk about this at the UI meeting today. Um, because I, yeah, I find this confusing too. Um, so yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of options, right? We could say um, even, even target, we, target disposition or something. We could do something like that. Yeah. Or choose disposition and current disposition or something, you know, I don't know, just some way of better distinguishing it. Cause you see both of those, like the minute you pull that up, I'm like, okay, it's on loan, but you said it's yeah. a collection. And then I got to look over there and it's just confusing. Yeah, and it defaults to on loan. Um, and so even if this just said pick or something, so it's just a little clearer. Um, yeah, like pick this, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. I I think I mentioned to you, Carla, there was an issue. So right, no, I know we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to just mention it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the nice thing about this is that the old loan form, basically you could only... Um, Basically, everything went on loan, and then you would have to go back later after you've saved it and then hand, um, like, manually update it to exhibit if you had a different disposition. Um, right. So, this is. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, it's great. Um, yeah. Um, I had a question about adding things to loan. Maybe this is going to be talked about later. This is Carol. Sorry. So, I, sorry, I missed just when you were doing that. But when you add stuff to loan, it seemed like like I need to see the barcodes to to be able to pick things for tissues. And it seemed like they were really far over in my view. I mean, right here I can see them, but. Yeah, well, I've made my screen small. So actually I would say anything past this column, just in my default view, I usually can't see. So that's another part of the issue is 
we might be able to make these fields draggable. And, you know, even at our a previous UI meeting, everyone kind of had a different preference. And so um, I don't okay. think we're going to agree on one, but if we, if we could drag um, yeah. things to the order we need, that would be. Yeah, well, drag yeah. yeah, I think for sure, though, barcodes was requested to be closer to the, um, no, the, the part, add the button part. and the part Loaded. and the add yeah. button. So that was a universal um, request. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That so today. That's it today at three, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, three four, so three. Emily, can you do a subsample? So I'm a little confused. So subsample as use part. So if you want to create a subsample of a tissue or whole organism or whatever, what do you do? So <laughs> Just right, it. right now it's free text. So I think we also want this to be controlled um, because yeah, if I- I mean, is there a reason like, the, I like the old form where you just have a little box. It's like, create subsample, check this, right? That's what we used to be able to do. Yeah. Um, and what does use part do? Let me just see. Oh, no, it does. Okay, so it is connected. It is, um, you are querying. So I, I just did H W H O tab. So it is connected to the pick menu and then you click it. Well, let's just click it. Um, what happens when you click it? How do you know if it's a subsample? I like the little check boxy boxes. <laughs> it's so yeah, much simpler. Um, yeah, Dusty. Actually, I've never subsampled in this new menu. What's the behavior here? So use part will oh, is use. essentially the same functionality as the old checkbox. Yeah, just do where you end you. up with 500 subsamples of a skeleton and nobody has any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh. The new one will allow you to subsample a skeleton into ribs or whatever. So if you click, uh, so if okay. I say, click, if click I use, use part is exact same as checking the box in the old one. So that just takes a subsample of that. Yeah. It's going to make a whole organism subsample. Yep. But gotcha. I could, if I had study skin, I could type in feather and yes. say, and so now I can and, be a bit more specific. Yes. So, so all you do is type it. in feather and save it. And then it yeah. yep. saves it as a subsample in that. Okay. Yeah. With a different part. Yep. Wait, so where do I type in feather? Oh, right where you typed it. Right. <laughs> okay, Whatever that. it's called. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And that, there's a how to up there. It's worth reading. Okay. Yes. Reading? Come on. <laughs> oh, no. Crazy, huh? <laughs> so much time. Well, that's the fatal flaw of the interface. It's like too much oh, yeah. reading is required. <laughs> Smart dots. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. We can yep. hear you. Okay. Well, you can a minute ago. So uh, where I have an example where you, I need to subsample a subsample. Is that possible to do? I know it sounds weird, but it, it's actually meaningful. So <laughs> well, would it be part? I mean, it, it would already be listed as a part, I think. Right. It would. Right. It'd yeah. be a subsample for a different loan. And then we're subsampling that to send to a different person. Yeah. It's a tissue, obviously not ribs or something weird. So, okay, so that is possible with this system to see yep. the old subsamples. Okay. Yeah, maybe back to the reading thing. <laughs> maybe <laughs> one minor thing, Dusty, and the how to and labels thing is to bold add some sample as item, you know, stuff before the colon, so it stands out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I, that. Um, I wonder if we could. Uh, this is a huge ask. <laughs> probably, but you know how in uh, taxonomy, when you uh, click on one of the little headers, then it highlights the how-to thing. I don't know if we could do that. Yeah. Like the headers in the table. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you put your cursor in one of those boxes on the left, on the, yeah. And see so how it highlights the... Things. Oh, uh huh. Oh, that would Brilliant. be cool. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible in the other form. I don't know. I was just thinking something simple just to make it stand out a little e bit better. Everything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, can I just ask a generic question since um. <laughs> We had a, a meeting yesterday about observations, and is there is there a, a discussion about 
changing the publication project search and media search to have sort of be sim similar in how it works to the this search interface? From this from this query block or from no from there yeah 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 like to, stylistically you know, yeah stylistically and sort of functionality wise so that they're all, you know like the project publication and media yeah has there been any discussion of that about that I mean I know this is great and you guys have done a huge amount of work it's fantastic but well we haven't I don't think we put that on the to do list but we should yeah there've been there've been uh, disgruntled murmurings. For sure. <laughs> Disgruntled memory. <laughs> and, there was and a we discussion do, of publications it, a year ago, maybe that died of neglect. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have some, and we have some mock-ups. So I think we could, we should definitely return to the mock-ups and and return to this new. Um, uh, yeah, I mean framework. the framework is great, and yeah. it'd be nice to like, yeah, this one, and then the media one is the other big one that we were, talking, yeah, yeah, um, cool. yeah, for sure. That'd be yeah, awesome. like I said. I, I, I would definitely say this is on the next uh, to-do list. I mean, you know, like I said, it's sort of a systematic approach. Sure. That we're yeah, taking. of course. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this would probably be next uh, once people, everyone calms down about loans and other stuff. <laughs> yeah, and and the other big one, I should say, are all the um, geographic searching. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's actually, I, I would say, next. That's yeah, the, the thing searching. Yeah, yeah, this one is just so busy, it's really hard to find. Yeah, to you find we, yeah, we, yeah, we get that. Um so yeah, yeah. so this is this is probably gonna be the next one in terms of priority, and then after that, uh projects and publications will follow. Okay, cool. But thanks. It's a process. Yep, I realize that. <laughs> but we're getting there. Well, any other questions or comments or anything you want to see? That's been fantastic. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, I, hopefully this makes life easier for, for people. Um, I know it has for me, especially the manage <laughs> directory. And um, yeah, we've worked a lot on the query block and so far, so good. So, um, yeah, and uh, the drag option to be able to put things where you want it. That's also really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one thing about that, too, is if you're um, for your results, one thing um, is, you know, that it'll remember your customizations in terms of what you've toggled. But let's say, you know, sometimes you need determination date. Sometimes you don't. If you drag it, but don't toggle it, it's not going to remember that. So just something to keep in mind um, when you're doing uh -huh. that. Hmm. Yeah, but it will if you check it. Yeah. So you can, so I, like for some of my stuff, I always check, I have it checked. And then if I don't want to see it, then I'll check it off for that result mm -hmm. and just refresh it. But, yeah, then I, but then I always want it checked off as a, my regular thing. Yeah. Cool. Great. Yeah. If there's any other feedback or um, issues, um, you know, just send an email or file an issue or can't find something. Um, obviously, uh, we're all getting, we're all adjusting as well, but I do feel like it's just visually a lot more calm. So it's a, a lot more pleasant <laughs> to, to figure things out. And Yeah, now I'm seeing the chat too. Michelle, were you saying that's how you do in your profile, the, the file? The other oh, ID. right. That was about the, col oh, yeah, the other collector ID. number. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Collector number is usually how I yeah, I just deal with it in my yeah. profile. And all those I did look, all those are on the menu at the very bottom. It's gonna list all those um, other identifiers. Yeah. So right. you can call those up. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you again. Oh yeah, my god, I, I can't believe we answered all of Phyllis's questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one for the books. That's great. Thanks. It was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, take care, everybody. Yeah, yeah thanks. Bye -bye. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.